Spider-Man No Way Home is the brand new MCU associated with Sony Marvel film, the third Tom Holland solo Spider-Man film. The film stars Tom Holland, Zendaya, Jacob Battle, and Marissa Tomei, John Favreau, Benedict Cumberbatch, Benedict Wong, Willem Dafoe, Alfred Molina, Jamie Foxx, Thomas Hayden Church, Reese Ifans, I'm probably missing people. Uh, they'll get no Tony Revolori, all these people are in the movie. So the movie film is about Peter Parker seconds after really p- the movie picks up seconds after the second post, the uh, first post credit scene in Spider-Man Far From Home, where Mysterio reveals to the public via J. Jonah Jameson that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. So uh, to fix this, Peter goes to the help of Doctor Strange, who is goal is to do the spell basically to make everyone forget that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. But as the spell, as Peter Parker continues to say some weird stuff, as you see in the trailer, the spell kind of goes crazy. The multiverse opens up and all and uh, villains from all the other uh, multiverses come into play and, and the job is for Peter to send them back home. The film's two hours and 30 minutes and is PG-13. Welcome back to a brand new non-spoiler review here of Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm doing this for a lot of people who are waiting to see this movie with less crowds or waiting for the weekend. Um, to give you this non-spoiler review of Spider-Man No Way Home. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, ring the bell, do movie reviews, TV show reviews, train proper reviews, movie review, uh, movie rankings, and a box office breakdown show. Box office breakdown show will be on Monday, as well as a Spider-Man movie ranking with all 11 films, including the two Venom films. Um, as well, also please comment down below your non-spoiler thoughts. If you've already seen the film, let me know, is this your favorite Spider-Man, the least favorite Spider-Man movie? Did it live up to the hype? Did it disappoint you? No spoilers in the comment section. I will delete your comment if it involves spoilers on this video. Um, and please like the video. So as I said, before I can start talking non-spoilers, I am releasing at the same time as this, a spoiler review. And the main difference between the two videos will be that this video will be non-spoiler, of course, but also will do my usual review format, where I talk about the positives, the negatives, then give you my score out of five stars and a percentage. Now, my spoiler review will just be me giving my general thoughts and spoiler thoughts on the film. There'll be no rating. I'm just gonna be talking about the actual plot spoiler details. So don't worry if, I, if you're here just for, to hear the score, wait till the end of the video, because uh, I will be doing my spoiler review releasing at the same time as this one. So let's talk non-spoilers. So again, non-spoilers, I'm not gonna even hint at anything. Non-spoiler review for Spider-Man, no way home. Um, so let's talk about the film positives, negatives, and, um, Score. So let's talk about my positives. This for me is by far the strongest performance for Tom Holland um, as Spider-Man. And this movie absolutely goes for it in every single way. Again, very similar to Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse. Um, that is a Spider-Verse film in animated. That was a big swing for Sony. It really hit. I think this film could hit even more than Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. This is a really epic, emotional, com- uh, funny, but also dark and real film that it could be one of the more darker, as you could say, Spider-Man films to date, even though it's probably one of the funniest Spider-Man films as well. I was laughing throughout, but you can really get to every emotion in this film. You can laugh, you can cry, you can feel serious, get invested, you can cheer. There's a lot of times you can cheer in this movie. Um, so it really does balance the emotions very, very well. And as I said, it's a home run because it balances if you see the trailer, you already know how many different characters are in this movie. Um, and the movie balances it out so well without focusing on with focusing on that this is really Tom Holland's Spider-Man's movie. This is Tom's movie from start to finish. Um, very similar to Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse. Like, of course, there's all these other fun characters, all these other different types of Spider-Man, but it was Miles' story. And even though this movie is encompassing by a lot of nostalgic villains who haven't played the characters in almost 20 years, even though that's all going on, you have Dr. Strange in the movie, it's still Tom's story to tell. And he's the main focus of the movie. And he is really, really exceptional, really from start to finish. He just feels like a genuine kid trying to do the right thing for the entire film, um, protecting his loved ones, the difference between a selfish and a selfless and the right decisions. He has to find those kind of answers. Um, throughout the film. And it's just a really amazing performance that he has, I think is by far his best performance as Spider-Man um, in the MCU that includes Infinity War and Endgame and Civil War. This is his best performance to date in the MCU. Really, he can be emotional when he's emotional, funny when he wants to be funny, serious when he needs to be serious. The balance of the performance itself was really, really great. Also killing it once again is Zendaya, who has completely grown, of course, as an actress since Spider-Man Homecoming. She's one of my main issues, actually, 
with Spider-Man Homecoming, not really her being bad, just the way the character was written, being really too cool for school. Um, and when, when it was revealed at the end of the movie that she was MJ, I was very mixed on it. She's really obviously come along because Euphoria is one of my favorite shows in the last 10 years. Of course, deserve that Emmy win. Can't wait for Euphoria season two starting in January, but she is, this is definitely, again, her best performance out of all three Spider-Man movies and her and Tom Holland do have the best chemistry. And I also want to say, of course, out of all the love interests, we have Emma Stone and the amazing movies and you have Kirsten Dunst story-wise and maybe even performance-wise, this is the strongest Spider-Man love interest to date, especially the character decisions that Zendaya, ha that MJ has to make during the film. She's, a she's his girlfriend, but also saying extremely loyal and has her own goals in her life as well. Ned Jacob Batalon has way more to do with, was one of my biggest issues with Far From Home. Feels like they had nothing to do with Ned and made him do this dating storyline with uh, Betty, did not work for me. This movie, he's, again, this might be Ned's best role. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is in the movie. He's not in it a lot, kind of compared to like how Robert Downey Jr. is in Homecoming. He's not in the movie a lot, but he's in there once in a while. That's how I kind of feel um, about Doctor Strange. Great to see Benedict Cumberbatch um, in this role. But let's talk about the villains who a lot of people were asking for. Um, Willem Dafoe is definitely on a whole other level. He's still, in my opinion, the strongest Spider-Man villain to date, that even included before watching the movie from 2002. It's a really dedicated, committed performance, but because he has a kind of a different look, he's actually a lot more menacing in this film than he was in 2002. I think they, because he doesn't have the mask for as long in this film as he does in the original, you can actually see the Willem Dafoe isms and the way his facial movements are when he actually is the goblin. Um, it really is a menacing performance that really, really works in this movie. Um, as well, Alvaro Molina is back, is, is really, really strong as Doc Ock. The de-aging that they use, you won't even notice it's de-aging. Um, it's really well done. Jimmy Fox, big upgrade for him as a character and a performance here in this film as Electro, then Amazing Spider-Man 2. He has not a lot more to do, but he gets a lot. He's a, it's a definitely different performance. He's, a, he's given a lot more Jimmy Fox-isms in the film. Um, which definitely, definitely helps. Uh, Lizard for me was probably the one useless out of the villains. He just kind of set was there to be there for the third act. A bit of a disappointing uh, with there. Also, the the visual effect as you can see in the. I mean, the movie is also just two and a half hours long, and it's an absolute breeze. I never even thought about checking my watch, and really from start to finish, you are in the action. Um, of the movie. The movie just never really halts down. And if it does, you're really wrapped into the emotional and dramatic elements of the film. And it really does encompass what the decisions are, really what the line is of what, what great power comes great responsibility, what that truly means in this film. And I think the film really swung big, swung for a home run and really connected. Um, it is balancing so many different characters from so many different types of films the tones, some uh, villains were brought back from tones like the Raimi's were a bit more cheesy than the Mark Webb films and more than balancing it to an MCU tone. I thought the movie tonally was really balanced, especially coming from three different movies, different, different franchises that have three completely different tones. Um, so that's a really tough time. Again, the screenwriting is also really, really efficient in the film. The writers deserve tons and tons of credit for putting all these characters in there, having, him, having them have their own moments. Uh, but again, making sure it's Peter's story to tell, Tom Holland's Peter Parker to tell, because that is kind of the crucial aspect of the film. You really care about him and you kind of do, you really do care about his decision and they really put you into his shoes. What would it be like? Again, it's a big risk for this film as well, because it's the first Spider-Man movie ever where Spider-Man's identity is known to the public in live action. This is the first movie ever where the entire world knows that Parker is Spider-Man. I think it's a really interesting plot that really drives the first act of the film. Kind of the, can you believe what is Peter doing? Why is he need Doctor Strange, the villains? It really is the first half of the film of Peter just figuring it out. What is the right decision to go with um, should he, is he okay with everyone knowing it's Peter Parker? Should he do the spell of Dr. Strange? All these different things really, really work. And so the visual effects are really good. Michael Giacchino's score is really fantastic in this film. Definitely his strongest, again, another strongest, strongest Spider-Man score. Um, it balances so many different themes from other 
uh, composers. Really, really well done from Giacchino. But again, the film looks great. It's a, really a breeze. And you really care about the Peter and MJ relationship. It really they have great chemistry. And you also really care about the Peter and Ned relationship that also drives you. It's not just Peter caring about obviously the, 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 the villains or Dr. Strange. It's also about his key friends who and Aunt May who don't have superpowers that he also desperately cares about. Um, I do have a little bit of some criticisms, but of course those are spoiler um, criticisms. I will say the second half is a lot better than the first half of the film. Now, once you watch the film, you'll get why. I can't really talk about what happens obviously in any part of the film that specifically, but the second half is a lot stronger than the first half. I don't think the first half is bad at all. I think it's actually a really good first half setting up everything, but the second half, once it gets going and you're kind of in it, it, I mean, it's an absolute the best, I mean, hour, hour and a half of the Spider-Man movie ever. Um, this is definitely my, I don't know, actually, I don't want to don't give them my, 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 my Spider-Man rankings, but in the MC, this is already top five MCU for me. I think it's at number three right now behind Winter Soldier and Endgame. So um, Endgame one, Winter Soldier two, this is number three. So I really did love this film. Sorry, I can't talk about criticisms. They are spoiler filled. And I, again, I'm releasing this video at the same time as my spoiler review. So you can also, if you want to find my spoiler review, if you already watched the movie, I'll give it a 4.5 out of five guys, a 96% for me, a 95% for Spider-Man No Way Home. It's definitely one of the best movies. It's definitely one of my, definitely my favorite movie of this year. Um, so if you want to find my spoiler review, if you already watched the movie and you want to give me, you want me to dive deep into spoilers, please click that link right there. It'll be a full spoiler breakdown of Spider-Man No Way Home. Monday, we'll have both my box office breakdown show and my full ranking of the Spider-Man franchise. I'll see you guys then.